Well, hello, I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, and it truly is my pleasure to bring you this encouraging message for today. But before we begin, let's go ahead and bow. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you for who you are. Thank you, God, for being the awe-inspiring God. Thank you for making miracles happen. Thank you for intervening in our life. Thank you, oh God, for being our champion, our guardian, our guide. Thank you, oh Lord, for your word today. Thank you that in your word, we find our compassion that we need from you. Thank you that your word also provides the correction that we need. But thank you most of all, that it continues to push us to be better than we were yesterday. Thank you for loving us, loving us enough to send your son, Jesus. Lord, and we just want to hear your word today. Speak to us and speak through us. Anoint this word today that it might change our lives forever. We will bless you always. We will honor you always. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, again, I am so excited about this word, and I'm going to try to do it in short order so that you can get it and you can go apply it. We're in Nehemiah chapter number one. And last week we were in Nehemiah chapter number one, beginning at verse one through four. And we're in the series of I'm building something. I'm building something. And last week, part one, we said we were assessing to advance. So today we're going to Nehemiah chapter number one. We're gonna pick up at verse four and go through verse 12. And the Bible records for us, when I heard these words, this is Nehemiah, after he's gotten the declaration or the assessment of what was happening to his brothers in Jerusalem. He says, when I heard these words, I sat down and wept. I mourned for a number of days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I said, Yahweh, the God of heaven, the great and awe-inspiring God who keeps his gracious covenant with those who love him and keep his commands. Let your eyes be open and your ears be attentive to hear your servant's prayer that I now pray to you day and night for your servants, the Israelites. I confess the sins we have committed against you. Both I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted corruptly toward you, and have not kept the commands, statutes, and ordinances you gave your servant Moses. Please remember what you commanded your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and carefully observe my commands, even though your exiles were banished to the ends of the earth, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place where I chose to have my name dwell. They are your servants and your people. You redeem them by your great power and strong hand. Please, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to that of your servants who delight to revere your name. Give your servant success today and have compassion on him in the presence of this man. At the time, I was the king's cupbearer. Prayer. Prayer is important and prayer is where we are focusing today. And we have to recognize that prayer is our communication with God. That's the simple definition of it. We have access to the throne room of God, the God of this entire universe because of what Jesus did, because of his sacrifice. But we don't go in alone. We go in because Jesus allows us access. But at the same time, we need the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said it this way in Luke, the 18th chapter, in the first verse, he says, men ought to always pray. Men ought to pray always. Mary, Mary contemporized it and it said, you don't know how much I pray. See, we see the outcome of people and as they identify, it's the God in me is what you really see. You don't know how much I pray. You don't know how much I give. You don't know what I did in private in order to have the public appearance that I do have. And so Nehemiah is praying here and prayer is our communication. And so today 
part two of I'm building something is I'm praying for progress. I'm praying for progress. See, I can assess so that I can advance. I need to know where I am. I need to know what the circumstances are. I need to know what I'm dealing with so that I can move forward, but I really cannot move forward. I cannot progress. I cannot grow without prayer. I need God's intervention in the midst of it. And so as we look at Nehemiah chapter number one, he's going to be building something, but before he builds, he gets the report. And in getting that report, he stops. He responds to the report that he heard. The response is first, he sat down. Now, let me ask you, he said, I heard what he said. Not just with his ears did he hear, but he heard it with his heart. How many times have someone asked you to pray and then you didn't? How many times have we thought about praying for someone and we didn't do it? And then they asked us again later, well, did you pray for me? Thank you so much. And you really didn't. But the part that we need to get is that we need to be intentional about our prayers, knowing exactly what we're asking for. But not only do we need to be intentional, we need to be immediate. I remember one Sunday in our meeting greeting, we had meeting greeting the, the church and Pastor Taylor before he passed away. As we were greeting one another in the service, walking down the aisle, he said, he, when he hugged me, he said, pray for me. And I stopped right there and I prayed specifically for him. He remembered that. Because see, if you say, pray for me and I pass you by, and I don't pray for you later, I missed a golden opportunity. Think, think about all the times that you've had grandmothers pray for you and mothers pray for you and sisters pray for you and brothers pray for you. You are not where you are today without the prayers of those that came before. Nehemiah says, I heard. I heard his words. And when I heard his words, I sat down. I stopped right then and I took care of something. I knew then, he said, I wept. I wept meaning that he felt it. He was hurt by the disgrace. He was hurt by the disappointment. He was hurt by the deception. He was hurt by what was happening to the people because he, he was connected. These were his brothers and sisters, other Israelites, and he mourned. Not only did he feel it, but he felt it deeply. He recognized the loss that they had. The, the walls were burned down, he heard, and the, the gates were, were not erect. There was no protection. And then he fasted. He gave up something that was pleasurable because he had a petition on his heart. He had a burden on his heart. And the Bible said, and then he said he prayed. He communicated with one who was more than able, powerful enough to change him and to change his circumstances, the circumstances of his people. So let's look at the prayer. Let's look at the prayer because we want to progress. We want to grow. We need to look at his prayer. He starts off, he says, God of heaven. He says, I know where you sit. You don't sit where I sit, but I know where you sit and I know what you have created. You're the God of heaven. And he really says, you're the God of earth too. You're the God of this entire universe, but I am acknowledging where you are, but then you are an awe-inspiring God. Not just any God, not just bland, not just melancholy, not just mediocre, but I know what you are able to do. And I stand in awe of that. And you inspire me. You encourage me. You push me. You're that God. The one that keeps your gracious covenant. He says, I know about your faithfulness. And I know some of us can attest to the faithfulness of God. I see you. I know your hand is raised. He said, great is his faithfulness. That's right. And he says, and I know your favor. Because if it had not been for your favor on my side, the doors that I walked through would not have been open to me. The tables that I sat at, I would not be able to sit at. The things that I have done, the giftings that you have given, the abilities that you have possessed and you have downloaded to me, the things that you have allowed me to do, I could not have done. You are the God of heaven. You are all 
you are inspiring, you are gracious. Father, I thank you. Because he says he does that for those who love him and keep his commandments. See, the 127th Psalm says, except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. Part A, we're building something, but except the Lord do it, we labor, we toil in vain. We need God. And then he says, Lord, I want you to see me, not just gaze upon me, not just look upon me, but I want you to look within me. In addition to that, not only do I want you to see me, but I want you to hear me, not just with your ear, but I want you to he hear my heart, my soul, not just going in one ear and out the other, but I want it to resonate so deeply. I want you to know me. And when I ask you to do that, I have to recognize that I need to confess. Nehemiah says, I'm confessing that I'm not perfect. I'm confessing that my people are not perfect. I'm confessing that we have fallen short. That's a nice way of saying we have sinned. And he comes out and says, we have sinned. We have not followed appropriately. David says in the 139th Psalm, you searched me and you have known me. You know my uprising, my down city. You know everything. My thoughts are far off. You know all of that. I can't go from your presence. If I'm in the highest heights, you're there. If I'm in the deepest depths, you are there. You know me. So I confess, there's no point in me trying to keep it hidden because you already know it. There is nothing that is hidden from you. But Lord, you promised. You, I'm reminding you, God, and I'm reminding myself as well that if we were unfaithful, you already said that you were going to scatter and that's had has happened. But there's a big B-U-T in the middle of all of that. But if we return to you, you promised that you would gather us no matter where we have been, no matter where we are now, you would gather us together if we would but return and keep your commandments. He said, we are your servants. We are your people. We belong to you. You redeemed us with your great power, he says, and with your strong hand. See, you loved us. You loved us better than we could ever love ourselves. You delivered, because we're Old Testament now, you delivered us the children of Israel, your chosen people, you delivered us from the hand of Pharaoh. You drowned them in the Red Sea. You did that. You parted it for us, but you delivered us from that. Oh, you fought many battles. You fought giants for us. You fought nations for us. You've done all of that. And now in the New Testament, we say, and you sent Jesus because you loved us just that much to be our savior so that we would have now communion with you again. We would be we would have access. We would be redeemed. We would be reconciled to you. And then he says, after all that, because I know who you are. I know where you sit. I know how great you are. I know your mighty hand. I know your wonderful covenant. I know, and I'm asking that you see me. I'm asking that you hear me. I'm, I'm just telling you, I know I have not done everything I was opposed to, but I'm repenting right now. And I know your promise. Your promise is that if I would return, if I would commit, if I would keep the commandments, if I would do those things, because I am part of your people and we are the remnant, oh Lord, I'm asking you right now, Please hear my prayer because I'm getting ready to do something that I can't do without you. I want my communication with you, Lord, to be effective. I want you to really hear me, hear my heart, but I need you to do something else for me. I need you to grant me success and have compassion on me in the presence of the one I'm getting ready to go before. I need favor with God and I need favor with man. If I'm going to build something, I need you to protect. I need you to provide. I need all of that. You have put me in position because I am the king's cupbearer, but I'm getting ready to go before the king. 
I'm in position, but I need your provision. I need your protection. I need your providential hand upon everything that I get ready to do. I want success. Please grant me success. Yes, as we build something, we can't build it unless the Lord build the house. We can't keep it unless he keeps watch over the city. But if we want to progress, if we want to grow, prayer is going to be that catalyst that's going to move us forward because it's going to change us and it's going to change our circumstances. So first and foremost, it changes me. That means I need some internal alignment with God's word with his commands, with his statutes, with his ordinances. I need to be in his word, but I need this alignment because this alignment means that I'm going to make some adjustments. Things that I have not done appropriately, I need to then correct. I need to repent, if you would. I need to turn away from something so that I can follow what he's asking me to do. I need the information, so I need to know his principles, but I need the revelation that it is a part of what I am supposed to be doing. And so that is going to lead to then my transformation. God, if I am going to progress, if I'm going to build something, I need to make sure that the first growth starts with me. I need to do something. But secondly, God, I need to progress, I need success in my circumstances. That's the external favor that I need from you. I need success with others because sometimes other people are involved. It's not about manipulation, Lord, but I need you to intervene. So I need success with others, but I also need success with the outcome because I can plant the seed, but you water and you're the one that brings the increase. You're the one that brings the harvest. You are the Lord of the harvest. You're responsible for the outcome. So I need you to help me with the others as well as help me with the outcome, but I need you to also help me with my output, what I am capable of doing. I need you to progress me. I need you to accelerate me. I need you to multiply. Yes, not just step by step, I need leaps and bounds. So if I deal with me, I need you to deal with them. When prayers go up, blessings come down. I get the principles, you provide the progress. And that's what Nehemiah prays for. Before we even jump into the outcomes of it or what happens, we see at the very beginning, he assessed it and then he prayed. It's the God in me. So let's pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your word. Your word reminds us that we need to pray about everything. God, your word reminds us that you are a great and a glorious God, that heaven and earth is yours, and you're the one that created it all from the beginning. In the beginning, you created everything that is made, and there was nothing made that you did not create, that you do not have ultimate control and sovereignty over God, you reign. You reign in this earth and we want you to reign in our lives. God, we come before you saying you are an awe-inspiring God. You are a gracious God. You are a providing God. You are a healing God. You are a victorious God. You are our champion, our guardian, our guide, our stay, our advocate, our helper. You are everything that we could ever need. So we come to one that is powerful. We want come to one that has a strong hand that is able to deliver us. But we come knowing that we say we're not worthy, but we recognize God, we truly are not. Without you, we could do nothing. And when we want to do right, evil is always present and temptations are always there and we could not get over them and we could not denounce them and we could not put them to the side if it were not for you giving us the discipline and the determination to follow your precepts and your principles. Lord, we repent. We confess that we have not done it all right, whether in thought, word, or deed. God, in all of them, we have messed up. Clean our minds and our hearts and our mouths, oh Lord. Change our attitudes. We confess that we have not always kept your commands. And even today, we haven't necessarily put you first like we should. But now, God, 
on bended knee we come and we say you are the one that we need you said that we should be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to make our requests known we come knowing that you are the god of this entire universe and you're the one that can change us and you can change our circumstance so we ask that you change us first Help us to be committed to your word. Help us to follow your principles and your precepts. Help us to know and understand and even ingest it in such a way that it becomes a part of our life so that we can put feet to our faith and walk it out. Lord, change us. Show us what it is that we need to do differently, Lord. If we are, are missing the point, if we have overlooked what it is that you're trying to say, Father, we're asking you to search us we're asking us, asking you to reveal it to us. And then, Father, we're praying specifically, thanking you in advance that you've cleaned us. But God, we're asking, hear our cry. We want progress. We want the promises. We want all that you have for us. We want immeasurably more. We want so much more. We want to do and be able to impact and to influence. God, we want to do all of those things. And we can't do it unless you grant us success. Grow us to the point that we will be able to then accomplish the things that you want for us in this life. Help us to leave that legacy of influence, the legacy of prayer for others. Help us to leave that legacy of a spiritual foundation that they will be able to then do more than we do because they are connected, more connected with you. Lord, we love you. We're grateful for the time we get to spend with you. We're grateful for your word that resonates on the inside. Lord, thank you for being our God. Thank you for meeting us at our point of need. Thank you for providing even what we don't even know what to ask for. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you today. It truly is my privilege. Again, I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, helping you put feet to your faith so that you can walk victoriously. Keep praying. Keep looking to God. If you need, I, and I want to say this, I do have a resource. I want you to make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I want you to share it with others. But if you need some additional assistance in being able to communicate comfortably with our Father, definitely look for Divinely Connected, Praying Through Life Struggles, which is my latest book. I want to make sure that that is available to you. So go look for it. It's on my website, shantaheems.com. You can find it where books are sold. Amazon has the ebook as well. Be blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make you make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you in your going out and in your coming in, in your labor and in your leisure. May he grant you peace. God bless you. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your week. You can find us online at h the number two h truth.org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.